Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. This is another video on Advanced Digital Design Challenge Series. In this video, I am going to give you the solution of our part 2, which is related to short pulse detection. And now without wasting much time, let us get started and see the solution. Friends, before going into the solution, let us revise our problem statement. Friends, the challenge is on your screen where you have to design a short pulse detection logic. So this question mark, this is an unknown module which you have to design. Input to this module are two signals. One is clock signal, another is one bit signal. On this one bit input signal, we will give a short pulse. What do I mean by a short pulse? The short pulse meaning is its duration will be quite less than as compared to the period of the clock. So let us assume that this clock period is 10 nanosecond and this short pulse will be only 2 nanosecond. This is just an example. It can be less than that also. Now, as soon as this short pulse is detected by this unknown module, it should give me its output high for one clock cycle. So let us name this signal output signal as pulse detected. Friends, to clarify this problem statement, I have drawn timing diagrams. Let me share those timing diagrams with you. So these are the timing diagrams. These are two inputs, clock and short pulse input. This is output, which I named as short pulse detected. So this is the clock signal, and this is a short pulse applied to the unknown module. You see it is quite less than with respect to the clock period and it is asynchronous also it is not like it is aligned with any of the edge now as soon as this pulse is detected by the unknown module it should give me its output high for one clock cycle as shown in a figure now let me give you its solution friends there are many options to solve the problem statement but as per my understanding state machine method is the easiest one and apart from state machine method, I like one more method, which is my favorite one. I will reveal that also. Now let us see the state machine method. Friends, in this state machine, there are three states, S0, S1, and S2. For S0 state, output is 0. For S1 state, output is 1. For S2, again, output is 0. And once we reach at state S2, it will stay there only. And if you keep your attention on state S1, the output is 1, and state S1 stays only for one clock cycle. So you will get a pulse of one clock cycle. And whenever reset happens at any point of time, the state will become S0. And again, output will be 0. So for every reset, it will come to S0, again it will go to S1, stay there for one clock cycle, and for that one clock cycle, we will get output 1, and then again it will go to S2 and stay there forever till the next reset. Now I will explain how you can convert this state machine into a digital design. But in that digital design, I will not put much focus on research synchronizer. If you want to know more details about research synchronizer, I have prepared another videos so you can go through them and I will paste their links in the description section. Now let us see how to implement this state machine in terms of digital design. Its solution is very simple. The first step is we have to convert a state machine into a excitation table. So for writing a excitation table, firstly we should know how many flip-flops will be there in our logic design. Now let me tell you how to decide how many flip-flops will be there in our state machine. So here you need to count the number of states, S0, S1, S2. So total number of three states are three. Now friends, we need to assign some binary bits to each state. And there are multiple methods to assign bits to the states. So the very simplest way that is more popular is binary state machine. In binary state means machine, we assign 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So two bits are more than enough for us, for these three bits. But if it is one hot encoded, so for each state, one bit will be required. So three flip-flops will be required. But in the current design, I am considering binary state machine only. So two bits are more than enough for us to represent these three states. And I will assign 0, 0 to S0, 0, 1 to S1, and 1, 0 to S2 state. 
So as in our design, we will have two flip-flops, Q1 and Q0 are their outputs. Q1 represents the MSB bit, Q0 represents the LSB bit. So 00, 01, 10, 11 are the possible uh, values of Q1 and Q0. 00 represents S0, 01 represents S1, 10 represents S2, 11 is a possible outcome of these two flip-flops, though it will never happen. But we have to consider while making our design. Q1 and Q0 is called the current state. Q1 plus Q0 plus are called the next states. So what is the next state after S0? The next state is S1, 0, 01. What is the next state of S1, that is 0, 01, is 10. And what is the next state of 10? It is 10 only. And what is the next state of 11? XX. Because we know that it will never happen. And writing access will definitely give us a reduced expressions. So this is about outputs. Now we know that what is the output required. So what should be the input to get these outputs? So D1 and D0 are the two inputs of our flip-flops. So what should be applied at the flip-flop so that I should get 0? So 0 only. So what should be applied at the flip-flop so that I should get 1? So 1 only. So it is replica of this Q1 plus. Similarly, D0. What should be applied at D0 that I should get Q0 as 1? So 1 only. So it is also a replica of Q0 plus. Friends, with the help of this excitation table, now we know that what should be applied at the input of both the flip-flops to get a required state. And from this excitation table, I can easily drive the expression of D1 and D0. Friends, the important thing here to understand is what will be the inputs to drive the equation of D1. So flip-flop output itself is an input to these flip-flops to drive the equation of D1. So Q1 and Q0 will act as our inputs to drive the equation of D1. Similarly for D0, Q1 and Q0 which are output of flip-flops only will act as inputs to drive the equation of D0. And from this table very easily you can write the k map of d1 and d0 and from that you can drive the equation of d1 and d0 so for d1 it is dependent on q1 and q0 so here you can write 0 into this box then 1 then 1 then x here so very easily you can drive the d1 which is equal to q1 plus q0 similarly d0 so 1 i am writing here 0 i am writing in the next box 0 and then x so from here you can drive D0, Q1 bar, Q0 bar. So far, our logic design can maintain the state transition as expected. But for us, the important thing is output. So let us draw another column for output. And we know that output is only high whenever flip-flop output is S1. So that is 0, 01. And I'm writing X when state is 11 1, because it does not exist, you can write X. So very easily you can write its k map and its expression will come q0 and from here also it is quite visible that op is equal to q0 so no need to write k map also now we have all the expressions with these expressions we can draw the logic diagram friends now we'll design logic diagram from our equations and i have written all the three equations on the left side d1 is equal to q1 plus q0 d0 is equal to q1 bar dot q0 bar op is equal to q0 these are our two flip-flops d1 is an input q1 is output q1 bar is output d0 is an input q0 is output q0 bar is output now what is d1 d1 is q1 plus q0 this is q1 or with q0 and this is d1 what is d0 d0 is q1 bar q1 bar q0 bar q0 bar ending then we are applying to d0 what is op op is q0 so this is our logic diagram friends with this i am going to end this video and i hope that this would be quite informative for all of you if you also like this video please press the like button and share your feedback in the comment section and in future also i am going to create many such videos so to be aligned with our channel don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching and your time